in this video, I'm going to solve this question. Before I start solving this question, make sure that you have a basic understanding of the concept of p-value. If you need some help with the concept of p-value, then you can have a look at our course on hypothesis testing in which we have covered all the concepts in a detailed manner. You may check the description of this video to get the access to the course. All that said, let's get started with this question. The accompanying data on cube compressive strength of concrete specimens appeared in this article. Suppose the concrete will be used for a particular application unless there is strong evidence that true average strength is less than 100. Should the concrete be used? Carry out a test of appropriate hypothesis using the p-value method. And we have to assume that the population is normally distributed. First of all, let's say that mu is the true average strength. So mu is the true average strength. And the claim that we have to test is that the true average strength is less than 100. So this is the claim that we have to test. Well, the counter claim is mu greater than or equal to 100. So these are the two claims that we have. Now, because this claim has a equal to sign, so this is the null hypothesis. And consequently, this is the alternate hypothesis. Note that it is a common practice in statistics to replace the greater than equal to sign in the null hypothesis with equal to sign. So we can write that null hypothesis is mu equal to 100. Now let's see what all information is given in the question. So we are given that we have this data. So now first of all, let's calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Well, let's denote the sample mean by x bar. So x bar is equal to the sum of all these observations. So x bar is equal to 112.3 plus 97.0 and this goes till 86.7 divided by 10 because in total there are 10 observations and this is equal to 96.42. So x bar is equal to 96.42 and now we can also calculate the sample standard deviation. I'm denoting the sample standard deviation by s. So s is equal to under root of summation xi minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1. So this is equal to under root 112.3 minus 96.42 whole square and similarly we can do this for all the terms and this goes till 86.7 minus 96.42 whole square and this entire sum is divided by 10 minus 1 because n is equal to 10. So this is divided by 9. So solving this, we get that the sample standard deviation is equal to 8.2586. Now let's move to step 3. So now we have to decide which test statistic to use here. Should we use Z or T? Well, let's see what all information is given in the question. So we are given that we can assume the population to be normally distributed. We don't know sigma. Sigma is a population parameter. It is the standard deviation of the population. So we don't know the value of sigma. And also n is not sufficiently large. So n is less than 30. It is equal to 10. So that means in this case, we have to use t test. So now let's find the value of this test statistic. We know that t or let's call it t calculated. So t calculated is equal to x bar minus mu divided by sample standard deviation divided by under root of n. So this is the formula to calculate the value of t. We calculated that x bar is equal to 96.42 and the value of mu under the null hypothesis is 100. So we can write 100 here. The sample standard deviation is 8.25 and n is equal to 10. Solving this, we get that the value of t is equal to minus 1.371. Now let's use this t value to calculate the p value and then we'll be able to say something about the hypothesis. Note that our null hypothesis is 
mu equal to 100 and the alternate hypothesis is mu less than 100 and we are given that the population is normally distributed. Now let's draw the t distribution. So let's say for the given degrees of freedom, this is how the t distribution looks like. And we calculated that the value of t is minus 1.371. So because it's minus, it will be to the left of zero. We are given that the alternate hypothesis is mu less than zero. So that means this is a case of left tailed test. So this is a case of left tailed test. Well, the rule is that if you are dealing with a left tailed test, then the p-value is the probability of the area to the left of the observed sample statistic. So this means that in this case, p-value is the area to the left of the value of t that we have calculated. So this is p-value. So the probability of this shaded region is our p-value. So now our problem boils down to finding the probability of this shaded region and for that we can use the t-table. Before we have a look at the t-table, note that t-distribution is symmetric. So finding the probability of this yellow shaded region is equal to finding the probability of this region and this value is 1.371. So these two areas are equal in probability. And this is because the t distribution is symmetric. Now let's have a look at the t table to find the probability of this shaded region. So as you can see, this is how the t table looks like. We are given in the equation that n is equal to 10. So that means the degree of freedom is 9. So it's here. And we have to find the area to the right of 1.371. Well, we don't have 1.371 in this row but we can see that 1.371 is somewhere in between these two values. So one is this value and the other is this value. So 1.371 is somewhere between these values and it is actually quite close to 1.383. And the probability of the region to the right of 1.383 is 0 0.10 and the probability of the region to the right of 1.100 is 0 0.15. Well, we cannot find the direct p-value in this case, but as you can see, 1.371 is very close to 1.383. So the p-value will be something very close to 0 0.10. Well, in this case, I'm writing the direct value of p that I got using Microsoft Excel. But from your exam perspective, you can just write that your p-value is approximately 0 0.10. So using Microsoft Excel, I found that this probability is 0 0.1017. So that means the p-value is 0 0.1017. So now this is the p-value that we have. Now to take the decision whether to reject the null hypothesis or not reject the null hypothesis, we have to compare this p-value with alpha. So the rule is that if your p-value is greater than alpha, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. So do not reject null hypothesis and if the p-value is less than alpha then we reject the null hypothesis. Well the twist is that we are not given the value of alpha in the equation. So if you have a look at the equation we are given that suppose the concrete will be used for a particular application unless there is strong evidence that true average strength is less than 100 MPA. So we need a very strong evidence and we are not given any particular value of alpha. Well, in general, we work with three values of alpha. So we either take alpha to be equal to 1% or 5% or 10%. So these are the three common values of alpha we work with. But because we want strong evidence, so that means we want to be really sure before we reject the null hypothesis. And to be really sure before we reject the null hypothesis, we will choose the alpha value as low as possible. So in this case, let's work with an alpha value of 1%. So let's say alpha is equal to 1%. Well, as you can see, our p-value is 0 0.1017. So it is way too greater than 0 0.01. 
in fact, even if we work with alpha equal to 10%, so this will be 0 0.1, the p-value is greater than this alpha value as well. So that means we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. So this is the conclusion. Do not reject the null hypothesis. So that means we can say that there is not enough evidence to conclude that the true average strength is less than 100. And this is all for this question.